5.20 in the morning. We've got some very, very, very special guests on the phone. Um, sorry if my mic sounds a little weird. We're doing something special this morning and it is uh, well worth it. Um, special guests joining us on the phone. We have um, the uh, owner of this radio station. He is a multi, multi uh, Grammy award winner. He is a philanthropist. Uh, who is one of the main forces behind the Martin Luther King holiday becoming a national holiday and a songwriter, a singer, a musician, and an icon. Uh, Stevie Wonder is joining us on the phone. Well, not on the phone, in the studio this morning. Good morning, Stevie Wonder. Good morning, Dominique. How are you? I'm Happy blessed. Wednesday. I'm Happy Wednesday. Happy Wellness Wednesday. <clears throat> Great to hear from you this morning. You now I was just uh, just take a moment because uh, the star of this morning is not you know in it's, the way it's going to be me. It's going to be my son who has decided Kylan Morris to come on and speak on some things that he's been doing, uh, not just uh, in the world of um, modeling and that sort of thing, but in creating fashions and styles. But just his commitment as a young man of 18 to giving to to the family, to the community. Uh, I did want to say, as <clears throat> you were talking about the mask, and I was just thinking in my mind how, and maybe you, <clears throat> maybe recording this, I don't know, but you know, when I, when I hear people talk about not wanting to wear the mask, uh, it, it's funny to me because, um, first of all, it means it, it shows you selfishness at its at its greatest because um uh me uh i wear the mask uh, over my eyes and it was not my choice but it mm. was something that happened and um i have to always wear that i have to always um know that i cannot see and i have to accept that and i have to live uh, in the boundaries of whatever that is and <clears throat> as much as being visually not able to see, um, to not allow your mind to be able to see beyond just uh, yourself um, is a perfect example of, of selfishness. And then to have fear on top of that is just too much. Just thinking, wow, what if I said, you know what, I, I don't want to be blind, I want to drive this car. <laughs> so then if I just decided to drive the car, then I would, you know, I would unfortunately kill a lot of people. Mm. Uh, well, this is sort of what you all are doing who don't wear the mask. You are actually, um, you are blindly killing people because it's like your first interest and concern is not uh, for the people, but for yourself. And, you know, I just believe, as God has said, all things will pass and this is just one of those things that we're dealing with. For whatever it is, I do believe also that there, there, there is going to be a solution. So I think more than people talking about what they don't want to do, um, you know, encourage people to start businesses that will sell masks to make it possible for those who could get the virus to not get it. And then Pray on actually us finding the solution for us to not have this. Because it's just, to me, it's a time out for everyone all over the world to say, wait a minute, there must be something that we're doing wrong to have this happening. It's not by coincidence. And um, again, we're talking about the planet and all that, how this is affecting everything and everyone. So... You guys, come on. Mm. You yes. Well, thank you for that. Thank but you for that. The honor is to introduce uh, my son, uh, because I only have one set of headphones. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing. That's amazing. Um, well, you know, just use it for, uh, my son, Kylan Morris, and um, I'm giving him the headphones, and you guys will talk, and I'll go and listen. Excellent. Yeah, well, yeah. Kylan Morris is, uh, he is the son of Stevie Wonder, but he has a career of his own. He's a fashion model. He is a fashion designer, 
and he is a philanthropist, um, activist in his own right. Kylan Morris, welcome to the front page. Yo, yo, how are you? Good. It's great to hear from you. It's great to talk with you. Um, yeah. I find it super important, you know. As starting my day, I always got to ask, how are you? Especially during these times. That's a good point. You, you know, it's weird because you do sound like a teenage version of your dad on the phone. Oh, uh, but you, I get that a lot, surprisingly. Yeah, no, it's it's for those of us who talk to him, it's it's pretty striking. But I know that you're your own man <laughs> and you have your own things going on. Uh, you are actually a successful fashion model and uh, a, a designer on in no small level. I mean, you are you've worked with some of the big names in fashion. Yeah, um, a few months ago, I just got done, you know, interning with um, Kim Jones, the head uh, head men's designer of Dior. So, obviously, that was an amazing experience. And you, I mean, your mom is a fashion designer, a well-known fashion designer. You could say style and and uh, you know, music Runs is in, in your the blood. Family. Yeah, Runs in the family. Yeah, but you know, but what you do is is still a credit to you because you you know. It's not automatic. It may run in the family, but you still got to do the work. <laughs> you still got to go up and do it. That's very true. <laughs> so, um, so I, I want to talk about your charitable work, but I just want to get a sense first of what what is it that you know you you are thinking of continuing as a model, becoming a, a designer in your own right. I mean, Dior is is big time, um, and of course, mm -hmm. we can always use more black designers. Uh, mm -hmm. Do you know yet? I mean, I know you're only 18, but what are you looking at in terms of, of a career path? Well, I mean, I, I get, when I get this question asked, I never really uh, give a straight answer because I'm always interested in so many different things, I would say. Of course, designing is a huge passion of mine, but I'm also interested in uh, furniture design, you know, name it all, anything that I can get my hands on. I'm just very intrigued by it. Mm. Well, yeah. I wish you the very, very best. One thing that you, you don't seem to have any indecision about is um, is helping make a difference in the world. Oh, yes. Yes, I feel, I feel um, very, I feel a huge call to action, I would say. You know, being that I'm 18, just graduated high school, you know, kind of sucked amidst this whole virus situation but i do feel a huge call to action especially if i'm speaking on behalf of the youth wow that's right so you graduated without a graduation in in a um, pandemic graduation i feel like yeah, you should sing the graduation song for you and like congratulate <laughs> you and throw confetti Yo. and spin that yeah let's do it <laughs> <laughs> virtual prom I'm mm -hmm. sorry you didn't oh, get to have your prom. I know prom. It's horrible. I feel like whenever this, all of these restrictions are up, even if it's like five years from now, all the kids that didn't get a prom should get one. Like even if you're no, 24. Yeah, we, going, we going back. <laughs> I don't care how old I am. I'm going back. I need to get that last prom in. Uh, I think so. I think you should have the limo <laughs> and, you know, the party, the whole mm -hmm. thing. Even if you're oh, 30. Yeah. <laughs> you know, gotta get it done. Um, yeah. But tell me about uh, your project with the Watts Empowerment Center that you just recently did. Yeah, so um, I uh, was a lot of, two weeks ago on Wednesday. I went down to the Watts Empowerment Center. Um, my uh, an extension of my brand called Calm Worldwide is like the nonprofit part where I focus solely on a lot of philanthropic um, projects. I would say helping people in need. So we went down there. I had these care packages that I, I put together, maybe like 150, 200 care packages for just the community as a whole. Inside the packages, uh, it was a T-shirt. It, it came in a tote bag. And then we had a face mask, of course, and then a Just water bottle. Shout out to Just. But I, I would say a huge part of um, Calm Worldwide is that we everything we use everything that we incorporate is 100% sustainable or environmentally friendly, which I feel very passionate about. You know, anything from the fabrics to the face mask, it's 100% recycled cotton. Even the Just Water bottle is, 
I think it's what seven seventy two percent made of renewable resources. So I find it very important to just kind of you know in every aspect of um work that I do to 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 let's see just to help the environment i'm very passionate about that so we went down there handed out those bags shout out to justin too justin mayo he is um the founder of red eye the nonprofit that founded the watts empowerment center so it was just a it was it was a great experience for me to go down there for the youth for the community yeah i mean it's it's powerful that you know you reach out it's powerful that you're thinking about helping other people stay safe in the middle of a pandemic and also taking mm -hmm. your own time to go down there. But in the middle of that, you want to have keep the sustainable piece uh, in place. Mm -hmm. Yes. Is it, I mean, I know your generation. Oh, I actually have a 15-year-old uh, son myself. Um, oh, talks wow. very, <laughs> very um, tuned into the climate emergency. Um, yes, I mean, I feel like honestly, not even just the climate emergency, but any emergency we're facing um, in the current climate of our world, you know, anything from, I would say, to do with the environment to a lot of the Black Lives Matter situation that's going on right now. I mean, I'll tell you, when I go to these protests, I, I, I really, I'm like really involved. I go to protest a lot and a huge demographic of people I see as the youth. I think it's such a beautiful thing, honestly. Yeah, it is. I think um, your generation and the one above you too, right, are yep. fearless. You guys are fearless I, in a way that I think many of the generations, what it's Generation X and the boomers, the ones above you guys, are mm -hmm. more you know, conditioned by the fear of the things that their ancestors and themselves the paradigm of the world the way it was then you guys are mm -hmm. beyond woke i think um do you feel like that's how it is with <laughs> your friends woke. or beyond woke like yeah we want change and we want it right now we're not sitting around waiting don't it's the time is right now do you feel like that's pretty common among your friend group or are you you know are you the exception yeah so i mean i definitely like to surround myself by people who um who feel very passionate about making change on things that are the unjust things about our country, about our world. So I'm always surrounding myself by those people. I, I, I find it really amazing. I have a lot of, um, you know, I would say allies. My friend, I'm a good friend, Kai Gerber. She's, um, she's a ally of mine. And just to see how involved she is in this whole movement is just, it's like, uh, I there's no words to describe it just to see you know somebody being involved posting going to the protest just trying to understand and grasp all the information they can about what's going on the systemic racism that we've been facing for hundreds of years I just it, it's a beautiful thing I mean I think honestly even the way you guys talk by you guys I'm talking teenagers right now um, <laughs> is so much more sophisticated than the language that activists had even 10 years ago. You know, you guys mm -hmm. talk about systemic racism as mm -hmm. a fact, not a maybe. Mm -hmm. uh, you talk about mm -hmm. allies and you're clear on what that is. Um, and I think there's people, you know, in generations above you that are still trying to figure out what an ally is exactly. Mm -hmm. um, how do you, where do you find this, you know, this kind of, information this kind of i guess knowledge around the movement and around making change around anti-racism how do you inform yourself on that stuff well you know when i have this conversation with people i i always tell them that we nowadays as the youth we have such a big plus you know we have the world at our fingertips our cell phones are just a huge part in getting information you know you can you can get information about absolutely anything on your phone. It's literally on your fingertips. So I would say that takes a huge part in just understanding this movement and what it's about. Because you can literally just type it up on your phone and research about it. It's so simple. And I, that's why for people who are like, well, yeah, I don't really know what's going on. I'm like, well, you should because, you know, it's it's not like it's hard information to get. Well,
Kyla Morris, I have to ask you this. I know everyone asks you, so don't get mad at me, all right? Um, oh, <laughs> no, well, my dad is uh, is an author. His, you know, he's a Miri Baraka. He's known for his poetry, his plays, and his activism. Mm -hmm. But he's no Stevie Wonder. I mean, I love my papa. <laughs> it's no disrespect. But just in terms of worldwide renown. Um, and I remember growing up, for me, I felt a lot of pressure being a daughter of you know, just such a well-known and accomplished writer, um, such mm -hmm. an iconic activist. I always felt like I could never fill his shoes. At a certain point, I just let it go. But <laughs> when I was younger, <laughs> I used to worry about that. Do you, does that ever, is that ever an issue for you? Like just the pressure or sort of the intensity of the spotlight being the son of a legend like, like you are? Yeah, so I mean... Growing up when I was younger, that was always sort of a, uh, it was a question I had in the back of my mind that I would always hear just like, ugh, you know, I'm, I'm growing up in, in such a huge spotlight being who my father is. And it's just like, oh, these are such big shoes I need to fill. But I guess as I grew up, my perspective sort of uh, switched, I would say, you know, because I'm not doing what I do to fill the shoes of my father. He's, I mean, he's done absolutely amazing things. I, duh, we would be on here for hours if I listed all the stuff that he's done. <laughs> but <laughs> I just feel like my whole perspective about um, that question sort of shifted. It wasn't, it, I was no longer thinking about it like as in, well, what do I have to do to fill my dad's shoes? But now I'm thinking about it. Well, what do I feel passionate about? You know, what do I want to uh, go attack in this world? Because I'll tell you one thing that I don't think my dad did was become a fashion designer. So <laughs> <laughs> there you go. You've already got you've already got something uh, of your own. Uh, yeah. For me, it was I just turned to hip hop. Yeah. I was like, neither one of my parents know a thing about this. So I'm going to just get yeah. real deep in this <laughs> hip hop and find my own universe. Uh, and that works yes, for me. Sir. But it took me a lot longer than 18 years old. So good for you. I commend mm -hmm. you on that. Um, but what is that Thank conversation? Uh, yeah, it's, it, it's a big deal. I think, you know, good for you. You uh, wise at a young age. So what what is that conversation, though, about activism? Right. Because I know that I learned a lot from my dad about activism. He taught me that everything is political. So if you're mm -hmm. going to do something, you might as well be intentional about what you're saying. You know, because um, mm -hmm. any any single thing that we do, whether it's art or, you know, whatever things we say have political mm -hmm. implications. Um, obviously, yeah. your dad is an activist, but no one can make us be an activist. And most most I'm young people sure. either lean into what their parents are doing or they go the exact opposite direction. You know, you could be on the Trump steering committee. Um, mm -hmm. you know, um, <laughs> what, what is <laughs> what is that conversation and that inspiration between you and your dad and 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 mom about um activism and your commitment to being part of the solution so i mean um my like my family has always been super involved in a lot of the problems that you know the world is facing i feel like in terms of activism my dad was always uh vocally you know aware of everything that was going on and he would speak on a lot of stuff I just, I remember literally we go to the White House. It's just like so crazy to kind of grow up in, um, in a situation like this. But I would say over those years, I've definitely just been watching them and kind of learning from them and how they deal with situations, how they vocally speak on situations. Because I find you now that I'm 18, I'm a first time voter, which is actually kind ah. of crazy. So congratulations. Yeah, I mean, thank you so much thank you so i just uh, being that i'm 18 first time voter i see this this situation with a lot of these unjust killings going on and i'm just like okay this is this is not something that i can i would feel right if i stayed quiet about so just trying to implement change in my own community and encourage others to do the same yeah um i think it's it, it must be wild to be coming of age for your very first time voting in this election, which to me seems to be a, one of our most important elections ever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I mean, like people say, I was born um, 090201. So, <laughs> you know, that was nine days before such a tragic event. 
So oh. my my life is graduating in a global pandemic. You know, my life has been kind of crazy, but I definitely feel when I am able to have a voice in situations and、um, encourage people to just speak out and do the right thing, I will definitely do so. You know, a, a lot of people think, and this is one of those punditry points that we hear on TV, but also、um, mm-hmm. which may have hit Bernie Sanders in this election cycle, that young people don't vote or that they won't come out in numbers. Um, what is what is going to be needed? You think to get people in your age group, you know, motivated and inspired to get out this election and actually take it beyond the protests to the ballot box and then back to the protests. <laughs> yeah. So th- this is a conversation I have a lot with、um, my friends that you know we all kind of just meet up and discuss, brainstorm a lot of different ways that. We can resolve that issue because for years that's always been a huge issue. You have like maybe thirty six percent of、um, the youth going out and voting. I'm just like for, from I think it's the age group from eighteen to twenty four. It's only about like maybe around thirty six percent of the people go and vote. And I'm just like I I don't know. I just find that information kind of hard to grasp, but. I realized when I did a lot of the research、um, on this topic, it's it's more or less that the information isn't there. I feel like there's always、um, this sort of norm that voting is an old people thing, but <laughs> it's really not. <laughs> but, like, just from speaking with、um, you know just people my age, even first time voters, they're like, "Well, yeah, this stuff isn't gonna affect me, so I'm not gonna get involved." And I'm just like. But if you think about it, like you see what's going on right now with this pandemic, I mean, everything, every little thing that you think doesn't affect you will indeed. So I find it very important that you do your research. I'm, I'll be, I'm p- definitely putting together a lot of,、um, I would say, sites that people can go to, just because、um, our our time spans are super short. I feel like if information isn't intriguing to us within the first few seconds, we can kind of just swipe past it. So. I'm putting together a few things that will indeed help people obtain information about voting as a whole, how you can vote, how you can register, and just a lot of the people who's running information on all, on all of that.、Mm, that's an interesting point. You got to get it in the you know in the format that's going to work for the demographic you're trying to reach. So、uh, you can't yeah, have some、important. lengthy thing, you know, if you're trying to reach <laughs> <laughs> teenagers.、Um, yeah. That's a great point. I'd, I'd love to, you know,、um, stay abreast of what you're doing in terms of just, you know, like the things, the online resources and things you're putting together. I think that、mm-hmm. that is crucial. And 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 in fact, young people are right in some ways in their instincts that it has been an old people thing. I mean, the demographics show that senior citizens are the most likely voters,、um, but、yeah. it doesn't have to remain that way. You know, change is、not. the only thing constant in this world. <laughs> That's very true. Very true statement. I also think that you you're making a good point, Kylan Morris, about what it's going to take to inspire people, not just young people, but all people to vote. Which is, we have to find our why. What is the reason、mm-hmm. why? It's not just you know when people try to shame us into voting. Well, you should vote because we didn't used to have the right to vote, or this or that. I、mm-hmm. think we need to find a very personal and specific why.、Um, you know. One、yeah. of you know one of my whys is that we get to vote on affirmative action this time in California, so that more、mm-hmm. young people of color, black people, brown people, and others, you know, indigenous Americans would have the opportunity to go to school, which was taken away by、mm-hmm. a law, you know, that that sh- Proposition Two O Nine, which never should have passed, and we get a chance to repeal that. That has nothing to do with the presidential race, but to me, that's one of my whys for this election. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, it would be not to say pointless, but if you're if you're going to vote with no、um, intent to inflict change, just like, well, why are you going to vote? You know, I feel like it's just so crucial that you really、um, take the time to just learn about who you know who's running. And not just presidency election, but everything, all of the information that you can possibly get on voting as a whole. You just, you, as you just need to do that. 
because if you go into the ballots with no kind of um if you go into the ballots with no idea of what you want like what that change what you want that change to be then it will definitely stay stagnant yeah what's your why what's my why um or maybe there's more than one yeah i feel like i have a lot of whys i really do um Mm. yeah i i i would discuss but i'll keep those whys personal just because i feel like you know voting is a very private thing that it is i do have a lot of whys and those whys will definitely encourage change for the um for the world for the better as i I love that actually um kylan and it's a really good point that's Mm -hmm. why our votes are secret (laughs) secret Mm -hmm. ballot right um and that that, that's one of the privileges we have as voters in this country is that you get to Mm -hmm. voice your opinion without putting it on blast um so Mm -hmm. i respect that choice you know i really do yeah i really do um so if people want to support the work that you're doing to to get involved in some way um is there something that you would encourage them to do um I, the, the biggest way you can support my work is by doing your part in your community. I feel like that's a huge uh, message I try to push just with anybody all over the world. You may think the little change you're doing isn't uh, isn't encouraging other people to do so or it's not making a dent in the bigger problem, but you never want to look at a huge situation as well i'm only one person and and the the little work i do will go unnoticed but you have to think you know if you if i encourage one person to do this and then that person encourages another person to do this it's just a huge ripple effect that will indeed encourage change yeah i think that's a great point um Mm -hmm. i'm glad you're inspired uh to do so Uh, just Hold on with me uh, just one moment, uh, Kylan Morris. I uh, thank you so much for for uh, checking in with us today. We're gonna no, uh, take a break thank right you for here. Me. Yeah, I appreciate you. If you don't mind, um, come back on the other side of this break. Sweet, sounds good. All right, it's the front page. We're talking with Kylan Morris and a little bit with uh, Steve Lynn Morris, also known as Stevie Wonder. It's Radio Free One Hundred Two Point Three KJLH and KJLHRadio.com.